Well, I think the current landscape is one in which there is a need for everybody to take a breath, stop, look up, look around. I say that because the last 10 years since ONC started marking time, but especially the last five years since high tech was in existence and pushing a lot of money to support infrastructure and adoption and practice adaption into the community have just been whirlwind. Uh, the industry's been busy developing new products, the providers have been busy adopting and implementing and changing workflows and thinking about populations and care in different ways. ONC's been busy thinking about standards, thinking about certification, trying to bring together communities. Everybody knows the list. It's been a, a really busy time and we have in that, because of all that, that infrastructure investment, because of all this work, I've started to discover that there may be better ways to do some of this or that there are some things that we've tried that maybe weren't the perfect solution. We've learned that the systems, once adopted, sometimes need to improve their usability. And we've learned that capturing data in uh, silos, boxes, whatever, walled gardens is great. Um, sometimes for the patient right in front of that doctor or in that health system, but it will be so much better when we can free up that data and start to share it between systems, add new pieces of the healthcare continuum to that, that piece of information, behavioral health, post-acute care, the patient's voice, and then really start to put it to use. So for me, the next decade is us beginning to free up that data that we've been capturing and uh, learn to put it to use. Again, not just um, how the patient wants to use it for their own care or they, they want to use it with their providers, but even in bigger ways to improve population health and start to improve the feedback loops of care is better quality, more safe, and that we're improving the medical science so that we can improve life and life expectancy. And make care. It is relevant and important to say that ONC is at a pivot time, not just because high tech ended and it's the 10th anniversary, but because this is a time when we need to re, uh, redo the federal health strategic plan so that we're thinking about health information technology and the responsibilities and opportunities across the federal government and how we do that in partnership with community. We're also going to be focused in this next year on a more future look for the Health IT Policy Committee and Standards Committee, making sure that they're helping us look towards the horizon for what's coming in the next few years, and then work backwards so that the work groups are doing that, doing the work of building blocks. As we think about what the world will look like in 2024, um, it is um, it's extremely exciting to me in many ways. One is that we are seeing the awakening of consumers, patients, the community with respect to data. They, they are wanting to quantify their health and they're wanting to share that information with caregivers, uh, with the healthcare system so that they can not just self-manage but have a way that that's done within their medical record. The explosion of uh, personal monitoring devices like the Fitbit um, are an example to me that people are paying attention to their own health in a new way, technology is enabling it and they're asking, they're knocking on the door. They want us to include that, uh, that voice of theirs as part of their overall record. And I believe that that disruption is gonna be fabulous and really change the way we're thinking about capturing data and what needs to be free to be put to use because we've been heretofore very focused on capturing data using electronic health records in more standard clinical environments, but it is incumbent upon all of us, the technology industry, the providers, the patients, the payers, employers to begin to think about all the other things that um, contribute to health and how patients get more engaged. And then engagement really is about them being able to both qualitatively and quantitatively put data into the system so we can all see it and share it and they can be a really effective part of the team. This also means that we have to think outside of the box of healthcare and, and really begin to recognize and understand, acknowledge, incorporate the idea that health is more than getting people to a doctor. That uh, for the research shows us that only somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of health outcomes relates to the healthcare system itself. So yes, we want better care, we want it to be at a better price, we want to do that right because everyone deserves that. It's an expensive part of our economy and we need to make sure we're getting great return on investment. But when we want to really think about improving the health of Americans, when people want to think about improving their own health or when providers want to improve the health of their population or their patient, have to start to think about the rest of the, the contributors to somebody's health, sometimes called the social determinants. Now that could be behavioral things like choices people make about smoking and eating and exercising, 
but really often that is more influenced by where they live, learn, work, and play. Where people live, learn, work, and play has a huge contribution to their overall health. And the way that we pay for care, the way we look at care, the way we integrate data and share that data and interpret it is going to, I think, be our, our next big challenge. So once we've figured out how to incorporate all that information, we have to start to really think through the ways that we are changing the health of Americans, not just with the important tools of health care, but really with those other tools that we have available, better housing, better schools, better transportation, better access to healthy food. And the exciting opportunity there is when all of that information is integrated and shared, when we know that somebody has um, a challenge with access to food, they're a low-income elderly person who doesn't have enough food to eat, um, treating their diabetes perfectly is not the only thing that the doctor should focus on. They should also know that that person needs access to better food. Mm -hmm. And if there is a program that they're eligible for or a way that they can link that senior with something that would give them, that would attend to that part of their health that is not part of a traditional quality metric, not part of a traditional record, not part of something we typically ask. I know every doctor would want to do that. I know every family member would want to know that the healthcare system can help identify that social determinant, i.e. food insecurity, um, and, and make that a part of our thinking on how do we can improve health. So that's one example. There's scores of other ways. We can talk about asthma and kids. It's not just about the right drug. It's about making sure the home environment is not contaminated with mold or with animal parts. There are public health tools that can allow that, public health partnerships, so that, that to me the opportunity is endless, uh, the ways that we can not just take care of the person in front of us or the population in the system, but the entire public and really move us to a place where we are proud of our opportunity to make folks healthy all across the lifespan and extend life expectancy for everyone.